Hello Leo! This is your astrology forecast for April of 2014. As I said in the forecast for 2014 generally, April is a power month because there is so much happening in the heavens in one go. So I'm expecting to see big global events happening and also reflected in us personally. So let me break it down for you. For the first five days of the month, we've got Venus in your seventh house of relationship. This is wonderful for meeting somebody new, for romance, for bringing romance into a partnership, an existing partnership, for coming over very charming. So if you want to negotiate a deal or in business, you want to have somebody agree with you about something or promote something, this Venus for those first few days of the month should be helpful to you. After that, on the 6th of the month, Venus goes here into your 8th house, joining Mercury, which is there for the first week, and um, Neptune. So, with these guys here in this 8th house, uh, Venus in the 8th house for you transiting um, could bring you some good fortune financially from somebody else. Could be some kind of a gift, a grant, a sponsorship, somebody just wanting to help you out financially. It doesn't necessarily mean a huge amount of money, but it just means some help from outside. If you've been negotiating anything with a bank or an insurance company um, or a mortgage company, uh, the Venus energy may well be helpful for you as well in that eighth house. With Neptune being there for many years, um, Leo's, this is a great time for developing that spiritual side of you, for going deeper, for delving into those things that perhaps you wouldn't have gone into before, for looking at the psychic side of you, for enjoying delving into astrology or tarot or numerology or anything that appeals to you. Because with Venus there, um, it helps you along. It makes the flow easier. Now, on the 8th of the month, we've got Mercury moving out of your 8th house and into your 9th house, joining the Sun and Uranus. So, a lot happening in this 9th house this month, Leos. The 9th house is all about um, having a new perspective on your life. How can you see things differently? Sometimes we get so stuck seeing something just from this one angle and it's like, can't get out. And with Mars now retrograde until May the 20th um, in your third house, this probably will slow down some of the thinking processes so that you will be able to have more of a perspective. And um, Mercury and Uranus coming together in this ninth house, um, if you're involved in some kind of a court situation, this could bring something new to light, something that you hadn't anticipated. Or you may have a wonderful idea that can help your case along. It's wonderful for new ideas, for education, for teaching, for sharing information, for publishing, and it's also very good for traveling. You may suddenly go on a trip unexpectedly, or somebody may book a trip for you and pay for it with air miles, but something unexpected happening um, with respect to travel coming up. It's also an important time to look at what you believe what you trust in, and maybe some of that's going to change. Maybe some of the beliefs that you've held so dear are going to be shaken up, a shake-up and something new to come in. So don't be afraid to let go of particularly beliefs that have not been helping you, maybe that people are difficult or something like that. Maybe it's time for a change and this, certainly the Mercury and Uranus, indicates an awakening something awakening inside of you. For those of you doing exams or anything like that, this should be a particularly inspirational time. I did say it's a big month, and we have this month the lunar eclipses, lunar and solar eclipse, uh, sorry, it's the eclipse season, and the cardinal cross going exact. So the lunar eclipse, full moon lunar eclipse in Libra on the 15th of the month, joins Mars here in this third house. Now, as I said, you're going to be rethinking maybe how you communicate, how 
how you share information. Remember the eclipses last for three months before and up to six months after they happen. So this is a time to re-examine how you're communicating. Are you listening well enough? Are people listening to you? And if not, why not? Also, look at social networking, networks. Look at your networks. Can you make better use of networks? Do you need to learn something more about networking that could be so helpful? We are coming into an age where it's going to get exponential, this connection that we have with one another. It's getting stronger and more powerful, and I think this eclipse is going to help you get more into that <clears throat> and use it more to your benefit. You might be taking some short trips, short journeys, and there may also be some issues to be completed with siblings um, in your family. Now, we have, between the 20th and the 25th, we have the Cardinal Grand Cross going exact at 13 degrees. I've been speaking endlessly about this Cardinal Grand Cross. Here is where it is for you, Leos. It's extremely powerful. It's, it's energies pulling in all four directions. If you can imagine, it's like having winter, spring, summer and autumn all at once competing for your attention. So what's competing for your attention, Leos? Well, what's competing is um, looking at your work area, looking at how you, whether you feel in control of your work or whether others are in control of it, whether you're doing something that is fulfilling enough to you and has depth and meaning. The Pluto is asking you to seek more depth in your work and the Jupiter here in your 12th house can be quite a lucky mascot, actually. It can bring you help at that 11th hour. And of course, these third and ninth houses, which is all about learning, sharing, communicating information, studying. It also involves anything involving technology, learning technology, sharing technology. We all, to some degree, have to have some kind of understanding of technology now, and that's going to grow, and we're going to have to increase our skills. So maybe you're going to be teaching that to others. Maybe you'll be writing about that to be others. Maybe you'll share that with others. But this is going to be a big focus for you um, at this time, Leos. Then, on April the 21st, we have the Sun going into your 10th house. On the 24th, Mercury joins it. And on the 29th of the month, we have got a new moon solar eclipse in Taurus. So as you can see, towards the end of the month, we've got a big focus on your 10th house, Leos. This is a big focus on your work area. What new beginnings, new moon, do you need to make in the work area? The sun there is shining a nice light on it, positive light. So there's some help there. Maybe you need to communicate something. Maybe you need to redo your resume. Maybe you need to write something. Maybe you need to write an ebook. Maybe you need to promote yourself more and in better ways. Um, these are all things that could come from this, uh, these aspects, these planets in your 10th house, but certainly there's going to be some changes in the career area and now um, this month, especially the latter part of the month, um, this is an opportunity for you to put into practice some of these changes that you've been wanting probably for a long time. So, and we've also got Saturn opposite all this going on. I mean, there's so many oppositions going on. So, Leos, I'm going to suggest that you focus on the areas where you feel most out of balance, that need most attention, and give those your most attention. Otherwise, there's a possibility with so much happening in the heavens that you're going to feel pulled in different directions and not accomplishing anything that you're really setting out to do. So focus on the weakest areas and try to strengthen those up. With Saturn in the fourth, you might be remodeling your home, moving home, relocating, um, maybe some changes happening connected to home and family. So there you have it, my dear Leos. I wish you a great month. Thank you for subscribing, commenting, listening. I appreciate it greatly. Bye for now.